Here's a Banger equation that looks deceptively simple. Pi to the power of negative x equals x to the power of negative pi. At first glance, you might think there's just one obvious solution. But here's the twist. This equation has exactly two real solutions, and finding both of them takes us on a journey through logarithms, calculus, and a powerful numerical method. Let's uncover both solutions together. Let's start by rewriting this into a cleaner form. Remember what negative exponents mean. When you see a negative exponent, it's telling you to take the reciprocal. So a number to a negative power is just 1 divided by that number to the positive power. So pi to the negative x becomes 1 over pi to the x, and x to the negative pi becomes 1 over x to the pi. There we go. Now we can see the structure more clearly. When both sides are fractions with one on top, we can flip them both. Taking the reciprocal of both sides is a standard algebraic move. And boom! Look at this beautiful symmetry. x to the power of pi equals pi to the power of x. The variable and the constant have swapped roles. This is the form we'll work with. Now let's hunt for solutions. Just by looking at this equation, there's one solution that jumps right out at us. What if we just set x equal to pi? Let's see what happens. Perfect. Pi to the pi equals pi to the pi. It's identical on both sides. So x equals pi is definitely a solution. But wait, are there other solutions? To find out, we need to be careful about our domain. Since pi is irrational, raising x to the power of pi only makes sense in the real numbers when x is positive. So we're looking for positive values of x. Now, here's the challenge. Notice that x appears in two places, as a base on the left and as an exponent on the right. That makes this equation tricky to solve directly. We need a mathematical tool that can bring exponents down to where we can work with them. That tool is the natural logarithm. Let's take the natural log of both sides. Using the power rule of logarithms, the exponents come down front. Now we have pi times. The natural log of x equals x times the natural log of pi. Let's rearrange this to isolate terms with x. Dividing both sides appropriately, we get the natural log of x over x equals the natural log of pi over pi. And here's the key insight. We've just transformed our entire problem into a question about a single function. Let's study this function. We'll call it f of t, defined as the natural log of t divided by t. Our goal is to find all positive values of x, where f of x equals f of pi. We already know x equals pi works, but are there others? Let's plot this function and see what it looks like. Beautiful. The curve rises from negative values, climbs to a single peak, and then decreases forever. This shape tells us something important. To understand it fully, we need calculus. The derivative of f tells us the slope of the curve at any point. It's like asking, is the function going up or down? When we calculate it, we get 1 minus the natural log of t, all divided by t squared. At the peak, the slope is 0. Setting the derivative to 0, we find that happens when the natural log of t equals 1. And what number has a natural log of 1? That's Euler's number, e, approximately 2.718. So the function reaches its maximum at t equals e. Now, here's what matters for us. Pi is about 3.14, which is bigger than e. That means our known solution, x equals pi, sits on the right side of this peak, where the function is strictly decreasing. Imagine a horizontal line at the height of f of pi. 
On the right side, past the peak, this line crosses the curve exactly once at pi. But look to the left of the peak, where the function is increasing. The line must cross the curve one more time. Let's zoom in to see these intersections clearly. There's our first solution at pi. The curve and the horizontal line meet precisely at x equals pi. And over here, somewhere between 1 and e, is our second solution. The graph proves it must exist and that it's unique. But what's its exact value? We need a way to calculate it. Enter Newton's method, one of the most powerful tools in numerical mathematics. Newton's method is an iterative algorithm. You start with a guess for where the root might be, then you draw the tangent line to the curve at that point and see where that tangent line crosses the x-axis. That crossing point becomes your next guess. You repeat this process, and with each step, you get closer and closer to the true root. It's incredibly efficient. First, we define the function g of x as the natural log of x over x minus the natural log of pi over pi. We're looking for where g of x equals zero. The derivative of g is the same as the derivative of f that we calculated earlier. 1 minus the natural log of x, all divided by x squared. We'll need this for Newton's method. From our graph, the root looks like it's near 2.5. Let's start there. We'll call this our initial guess, x naught. Now we apply the formula. x1 equals 2.5 minus g of 2.5 divided by g prime of 2.5. Let's calculate those values. This whole fraction here is the correction term. It tells us how far off our guess was. Plugging in the numbers, we get 0 0.3665 minus 0 0.3643 in the numerator. That's a tiny difference, 0 0.0022. The denominator is 0 0.01339. We're already close to the root, which is why the numerator is so small. Dividing these, we get 0 0.164. So our new estimate, x1 is 2.5 minus that, which gives us approximately 2.336. Now watch what happens when we keep iterating. After the second iteration, we get 2.484. Third iteration, 2.5019. Fourth iteration, 2.5021. It's converging fast. With each step, the number of accurate decimal places roughly doubles. By the fourth iteration, we've essentially nailed it. Let's bring it all together. So here's what we've discovered. The original equation, pi to the negative x equals x to the negative pi, has exactly two real solutions. The first one is elegant and symmetric. x equals pi. We found this just by inspection. The second solution is more mysterious. Approximately 2.502. We proved it exists using calculus and the shape of our function. Then we calculated its value using Newton's method, two completely different solutions to the same equation, one obvious, one hidden. If you enjoyed this journey through exponential equations, logarithms, and numerical methods, please hit that like button and subscribe for more mathematical explorations. Thanks for watching.